I was very quiet, but I observed and I learned a lot. Now, what am I talking about? I'm talking about when I was a child and I used to watch the employees that worked at my father's large janitor service and I would watch the tips and the tricks that they had to cleaning. And today I'm gonna to show you how to clean your primary bathroom or any bathroom like a professional. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel and into my home. So before we start any deep cleaning, we need to be sure to put away all the clutter, anything that does not belong in that space or if it has a home in that space, go ahead and put those things away. You do not want to be cleaning around clutter. If you're new here, my name is Michelle and I started this channel because I wanted to encourage women to reclaim the peace in their lives by building sensible routines. I follow four main routines here in my home. I have my morning routine, my evening routine, I have the power hour, and then I also have my zone cleaning. That's what you're seeing me do here. Hey, have you seen one of these? This helps to bring um, lift in the root of your hair. It's fabulous. No more backcombing, ladies. You use this and it's fabulous. I think they call it the volume. Anyways, I wanted to show you that. So yes, I have four main routines. Um, and on Sundays, I like to do a reset of the house just to be sure that everything is back into um, place. And then I can start the week fresh with my routines. So as you see, I'm removing everything out. And then now we're going to see the cleaners. And these are the cleaners that, I can, that I'm going to be using but guys, I never use those gloves and I needed to use those gloves. I've got e eczema on my hands and, and all the things and chemicals are not good for that, as you know. Anyways, these are the things that I'm going to be using minus those um, gloves. Now I'm going to start from the ceiling and I'm going to take out my doka pole and I want to swipe down any dust, any um, cobwebs. I live here in Texas, so we get lots of cobwebs. Um, anything that might be up there, I can use it to dust high, um, all the things. This thing is fabulous because I would not be able to reach the top of these ceilings um, if I did not have the... Um, the doka pole. It does come with several attachments. This is my favorite one for indoors, um, but it also comes with one that you can use outdoors to get cobwebs from underneath your um, eaves and overhangs, which is super important, you know, so that you don't get um, spiders in your ha house. You don't want them living underneath your your eaves and overhead um, overhangs because they will come into your house. But anyway, so we use that quite often. And then I use this every time I do zone cleaning, I pull out my doka pole and I use this. Um, that little chenille, um, they look like little fingers. Anyways, that comes off of there and I just wash it and then um, put it back on and I use it again. I don't have to wash it every single time, but about every... I don't know, maybe every four months, unless I'm cleaning fans. Now, if I'm cleaning fans, I've got to clean it more often, okay? Because um, it really, really grabs the dust off of the fans. But if I'm doing this um, around the house, then I don't have to clean it as often. You get what I'm saying. And I also like it because it cleans all of the vents. Um, you'll see me right there doing the vents. Um, again, I would not be able to reach that if I did not have this doka pole. So... Okay, so that's my first step is I like to clean up high anything that doesn't attach to that chenille um, covering. It's going to land on the floor and then I can um, um, vacuum it up. So we're still working high and now I'm going to do these shelves. As you know, I get very nervous when I get up here because remember when that pot fell down on me and um, landed on my shoulder um, from this very top shelf. Um, so the top shelf makes me very nervous. And, um, but I do check it every time I'm up here, I move around that shelf just to be sure that everything is still nice and anchored. Cause I do take a nightly bath and I don't want one of those shelves falling on me. Um, I do have them very secured in there. Um, what doesn't have a molly um, is screwed into a stud. But once you have something fall on you, it makes you very nervous. So anyways, um, I like to clean these shelves and because um, they're dark and you can see any kind of dust on here. So anytime I do a zone cleaning, I always have to clean these shelves. Um, so that's what I'm doing. I'm using my Method um, Daily Wood Cleaner. Stuff smells fabulous. It does not leave anything oily. It actually just cleans and does not leave a oily um, substance on your um any furniture that you're using it on. I also use this on my kitchen table every night after we um, eat. You know, you clean your table with it. So, 
And then I will also use it to clean my um, shutters. And then I also use it to clean my doors. Now today, I'm not going to clean the doors. I used to do that. Every zone cleaning, I would clean the doors in that room. And I found that that is just um, way too much. <laughs> To be honest with you, it's way too much. You do not need to clean your doors every single zone cleaning. Um, I do that about every three months. Um, I will, you know, keep track of how often, you know, I went in there and I cleaned the, the doors. And then I will add that into um, the zone cleaning for the next time. You see what I'm saying. Doesn't need to be done every single time. Um, I do dust them and, and all of that. But to actually clean them probably about every three months, um, unless you see smudges. I always take care of things when I see it um, as soon as I can. So, okay, so now we're just gonna dust everything, still working high, and then we'll work our way down. You're never here when my tears dry. You're never around to see me thrive When it's my birthday or my day off You got other plans and can't show up But when life does me a hand All of a sudden you're the first to come Always there to help and listen You're just a friend when I come undone I have to fall apart to get to see you, see you again. Remember back in the day when they told you to use newspaper to clean your windows, clean your mirrors, all of that? Well, you don't have to do that anymore. If you use a e-cloth microfiber shining cloth, it will quickly get your windows, your mirrors, your glass nice and shiny and clean. And no longer do you have to turn off the lights to do it because this really leaves everything streak free no matter whether you have the lights on or off. Um, I do remember the um, ladies that worked for my father using newspapers and um, I always thought that that was fascinating that they would use newspapers to clean the mirrors and I never really asked why. I was a very very quiet child um, but I was very very observant as I told you and I never understood why they were using newspapers until I got a little bit older and then I realized okay they are um, using it because you don't get that lint and stuff when you use it. Same thing goes for the e-cloth. You do not get the lint um, if you use that e-cloth shining cloth. I absolutely love that. Okay, so now I'm going to clean off my counters. These right here are all my serums, my masks, everything that I use for my skin throughout the week. I don't use all this every single day. There's different things, different routines that I use for my skin. I talk all about that over on my Instagram channel where I talk about hair, skin care. I do recipes. Um, I show you behind the scenes of me working, um, you know, doing my YouTube videos. I share my grandkids, all the things. I'm going to use these two products for my sink top, the soft scrub for inside the, the sink, and then I will use that method um is it bathroom yeah method bathroom cleaner smells so so good anyways i will use that for on top of the sinks now how do i um take care of these sinks in between deep cleaning well that is in my morning routine and i'm going to link my morning routine at the end of this video for you so that way you can see how i maintain these spaces in between these deep cleans okay Let's go ahead and listen to a little bit of music and we're going to watch me get some cleaning done. You're the first to come. Always there to help and listen. You're just a friend when I come undone. I have to fall apart to get to see you, see you again. You only have a If I would win the lottery, you wouldn't be happy for me. But if I blew it all in one day, you'd be the to hug my pain away. Cause in tricky situations, you are the best friend that I've ever had. But it's such a funny I have 
have to fall apart to get to see you, see you again. Again, I should be using my gloves and I can kick myself for not using them. We are about to leave um, to go on a cruise and um, I'm now going to have to take the ointment <laughs> that I have um, to help with my eczema on my hands. Um, these harsh chemicals really, really play a number um, if you have eczema or sensitive skin or anything like that. So I have always been out of the habit of wearing gloves and even though my doctor tells me all the time, you need to be wearing gloves, I always forget. And again, I could kick myself because we are about to leave on a cruise. So anyways, wear your gloves, ladies. Um, especially if you have sensitive skin, wear your gloves. <laughs> I wish I could make you stay Cause baby I love you Why you tryna break us up When I'm tryna build it up I wish I could make you stop Cause baby I love you Guess I'm gonna dance alone tonight I'm gonna miss your body You know I can never get it right Without you, no I don't wanna step into the light If I don't get you shoddy so I know I'm going to get the question, why did I not move everything off of my counter? But you're going to see me moving everything off of Michael's counter. Well, the reason is, is because um, I cut hair in here um, yesterday. I cut both of my um, grandson's hair. Um, if you don't know, I'm a professional hairstylist. Um, I'm now retired, um, but I still do the, the little boy's hair um, <laughs> at, here at my house. I also do my husband's, my son-in-law's, whoever wants to come over and get a haircut, I will do their hair. And I do it right in front of this mirror, which means a lot of those little particles um, fly around over here. So I want to move everything and get it all cleaned up. If I don't have to move a lot of products, I don't. I will move it from one side of the sink to the other instead of taking steps and putting them somewhere else. Unless you have a whole, whole lot of stuff on your sink, you really don't need to move it um, off of the sink. Just move it to the other side and then clean one side and then move it back and then clean the other side. You see what I'm saying? So if you don't have to make too many steps um, to um, do something, that is a great tip. Okay, try to not make a bigger mess trying to clean a mess. <laughs> That's why I tell you, put away all the things before you start this deep clean. That way you don't get distracted from cleaning by putting away um, clutter. Get the clutter picked up first, then do your deep clean. And then um, try not to move things all over the house or move it down on the floor or anything like that. Even when I organize a drawer, I will do one drawer at a time. You won't see me pulling everything out of drawers or cupboards or things like that and then um, you know cleaning the area um, because it will get you distracted if you do that and who wants to be left with a huge mess in your house having to wait till tomorrow to um, clean it same thing with my closet I do not take all the clothes out of my closet to clean my closet I will take a section and work on that section and then I'll you know work on another section and then another section but I don't take the clothes and take them into my room and put them on my bed 
because that's just going to make a huge mess. And if something happens and I can't get to it, now I've got clothes on my bed. <laughs> so um, I do things in small increments um, when I'm decluttering and things like that. So, okay. So as you can see, I put the uh, microfiber, it's not a microfiber cloth. It's the e-cloth, shining cloth right there on my Swiffer. You saw me do that. That way I can reach these um, tall mirrors and all the things. Um, I used to get a ladder out and I would lean over and get these mirrors um, cleaned. It wreaks havoc on your back when you do that. This right here, perfect. And I can get it done so much quicker. And as you can see, everything looks nice. Now, see that little yellow ring? I don't know if you can see it, but I think that when my husband washes his hands, it, it brings water underneath the, the little tray that I keep here and it stained my countertop. I've done everything to try to get rid of that stain, including bleach, um, a little bit of the pink scrubby stuff. I put that on there. Um, you know, that's a very soft abrasive. You don't want to use anything too strong on your, on your counters like this because it can scratch it. But um, I can't get that little spot up. So in order for it not to get worse, I go ahead and I put a, um, a face cloth underneath that and it will help to catch those drips. And then in the morning, when I do my morning routines in here, I will check that cloth. If it needs to be switched out, then I will go ahead and switch it out. Okay, so these are the two products that I like to use in my shower and also in my bathtub. I do like to add a little bit of the Dawn Power Wash to give it that suds um, and you don't want to use a lot, okay? Um, I've made the mistake of using too much and it's a big old sudsy mess, but spray a little bit and then you can spray your Method Cleaner right on top of that. It's okay if you mix these two um, products together. Be very careful when you're mixing two products together. You want to read and be sure that those things can be mixed together. Okay, I'm going to allow that to sit for just a little bit and do its um, action. Um, you want to be sure that you do that. Allow your products to work. Um, you need to give it some dwell time. Um, you don't want to just put it on and then start cleaning. Okay, um, give it just a little bit to work and um, set and then it's going to make your job so much easier. Now, once that sets, um, I'm going to go ahead and just add a little bit of water and then I'm going to scrub everything with my little, um, I think that's the Clorox wand. It's absolutely not my favorite wand. Trust me. Um, it, I don't know, it gets rusty um, down at the head of it. I probably should remove the head every single time. Um, I hate to do that. Um, you know, the less steps, the better for me. Um, I tend to just sit this in the shower and allow it to dry and then I will go put it away uh, with my other cleaning tools. Um, but I have to oftentimes go and rebuy a new one of these so that way I can, um, you know, not have the rust in it. Now I keep this little wand in the shower and this is what I use in between deep cleaning. Just put a little bit of, I fill it half and half, half with the blue Dawn soap. Okay, the liquid soap, and then half with um, vinegar. And when you're in the shower, just um, take that and scrub your walls, scrub your um, glass, all of that, and then you can rinse everything off. Um, I have my husband do this because he mainly is the one who takes showers. I mainly take baths. Um, so I just have him do that every once in a while, um, you know, like once a week. Um, that way it will maintain the cleanliness of your shower in between these deep cleans. Okay, it's very important to have maintenance cleaning put into place um, so that way you're not coming back to a real, real big mess. Because um, remember, I'm not going to be in here for another five to six weeks. Um, I have um, five, six zones in my home. I know that's confusing, but um, I have outdoor areas that I consider a zone. Sometimes I do those zones. Um, and then some months I don't do the zones. Like, you know, 
it just depends. Like, you know, in the summer, I have um, swimmers over here and I have to do that zone much more often. Um, you know, when the swimmers are over here, I got to get out there and clean everything and I rinse everything off. So I don't need to do that zone in the summer because I'm doing it um, every week or anytime the kids come over and swim. So anyways, that's why I say five or six zones, but in between um, your zone cleaning in here, you have to have a way of maintaining that um, clean. And the way that I do the shower is with that wand. Okay, and then I also have my husband take the squeegee. Every time he takes a shower, he takes the squeegee and he, he squeegees everything down. Doesn't have to be perfect. Um, you're squeegeeing mainly to get the water off of the glass. You're not doing it for a beautiful shine. If I asked my husband to do it for a beautiful shine, he would be in here for a long time and he would not want to do it, right? So um, I just ask him to get the water off so that way it does not leave water spots, which is going to make it more difficult to clean when I come back in and I do a deep clean. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this done and then we're going to go to the tub and I'll show you how I take care of the tub in between deep cleans. Baby, I love you, yeah. Why you gonna leave when I need you the most? Wherever you go, I'll be there, you know. Don't be a stranger, don't be a ghost. Cause baby, I love you, yeah. Guess I'm gonna dance alone tonight. I'm gonna miss your body. You know I can never get it right without you, no. Okay, so while I was cleaning the shower, those cleaners have had some time to dwell on this surface. It softened up any of the soap scum and all the stuff that needs to come out of this tub. But let me show you what I do in between deep cleans. While I'm in the tub and I let the water out so the water's draining, I will take my rag and I will go ahead and wipe down all the surfaces, the tile, the, um, the top of the tub here on this, they call it the seat of the tub. I don't know why you'd wanna sit way over there, but anyways. Um, the the faucet all the things on the top okay the water's um, you know going down the drain and then I will also wipe down the walls and then as the water continues to go down I will go further and further down till finally I'm at the bottom of the tub now this doesn't take long all right just as long as it takes for the the water to you know go down the drain and then this is the way that I'm able to keep my um, bathtub nice and clean in between those deep, deep cleanings. Um, I do take a lot of Epsom baths. Every night I take an Epsom bath. Um, you know, I also exfoliate in the tub and all of that. So you want to be sure to clean all of that out or it's going to stick to your tub and you're going to have a lot harder time um, getting that stuff off the tub when it's time for your zone cleaning. It's all about maintenance cleaning, my friends. Okay, so now I'm going to work here in the toilet room. I'm going to take out the trash first, and then we're going to put this 24-hour microband on the toilet. I know it's blurry, but it's a 24-hour microband. 
you put that on the toilet and you want this to sit. Um, I think it has a 10 minute dwell time if you want to um, sanitize with it. So um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put all this on and then I'm going to go clean the cabinets while that is dwelling. Okay, on here I'm just using my Method Daily Wood Cleaner, the same ones that I used on the shelves and the shutters. Um, and this is going to give this a nice clean. I do have dark cabinets and um, it will show everything on these cabinets. You know, white and dark both show things. Um, dark, you're going to see any of the, the dust and things like that. And then white, you're going to see all the fingerprints. So you can't get away from it. Um, you're just going to have to clean your cabinets. So I like to go ahead and do this um, during my zone cleaning and just give all this a good wipe down. Show me what it's like to be circling among the clouds Because without you by my side I would be stuck here on the ground you're lighting up the way I can see the road ahead of me I won't be stumbling in the dark Your eyes are shining like the stars Okay, so I'm switching over to paper towels and I'm going to use the paper towels to wipe down the toilet. I would not want to use my microfibers on here. I just don't trust it. I don't trust I'm going to get them clean enough. Now, if you don't have one of these toilets where the seat pops off so you can clean underneath it, what are you doing? You need to go get you one and I'll link this one below for you. Um, this thing saves so much time and you would not believe the gunk that you get underneath that seat. It's disgusting. Anyways, um, I'm going to continue to clean the toilet. Then I will use my Clorox wand. I love that thing. Use my Clorox wand to clean um, the inside of the toilet. Now I can see some areas underneath that um, rim that I haven't been getting. And I would have never known it was there had I not either gotten down on the ground and looked in there or filmed like this. So let that be um, uh, maybe some warning to you or um, whatever it is to you that look underneath the rim because I see some stuff under there that needs to get gotten. Now it could be hard water. If it's hard water, you can use a pumice stone and clean underneath there. That's where the water comes out um, into the toilet. So it could be hard water. Just use a pumice stone and get that cleaned up. Now this is the um, Squatty Potty. I'm going to go ahead and give this a quick clean. I did add a little bit of soap to it just to give it a little bit of suds. Um, and then I will go ahead and put this back into the bathroom or around the toilet once it dries. And once I get that floor cleaned. I was down until you saved me, until you set me free. My eyes were closed. Now I see clear as day And I just wanted to say That you can take me high Feels like I can fly You can take me high I can see the sun staring at you When you make that smile I'm moving closer to you now I can't get close enough somehow and I was Okay, so before I take that e-cloth, shining cloth off of the um, Swiffer, I'm going to go ahead and do the glass around the shower. Of course, I don't do this um, every time I clean the bathroom. In my morning cleaning, I don't <laughs> do the um, glass like this. If I see spots, I will definitely get the spots along with the mirror, but I don't do the whole glass like I'm doing right now. But this is one of the things that I learned um, from my father and from, you know, the people that worked in his in his janitor service is you want to be sure that you're taking care of the things that can be seen. You want it to shine. You want it to sparkle. You want it to be tidy. You want it to be clean. Okay. This is what sells. <laughs> it is the topping on the cake <laughs> when you own a janitor service. They want to see those, those special touches. They don't want to see any handprints or, or, um, um, water print or anything like that on the glass. Okay, so this is um, the reason why I do this. Um, I just want to give it that added sparkle. It's the icing on the cake to a very um, thorough, deep zone cleaning here in the bathroom. And then I'll go ahead and I'll remove the shining cloth off of the Swiffer. 
and I will use that to go ahead and shine up all of my chrome and things like that. Now there is enough product on this that I don't have to add any more product to the um, the handles or anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and just shine everything up. You want to be sure to not only get your faucets, but also pay attention to any handles that you might have on your cabinets. I don't have any, so I won't be doing that. But also be sure that you're doing your towel bars. Um, those That gets a lot of fuzz on there. Um, the toilet paper holder, especially, that gets a lot of fuzz from the toilet um, paper. Um, so go ahead and be sure that you're getting all that shined up and then you can take this and put it into the washer and, um, you know, wash your cloth. No one will ever take me, no one will ever take me away from you. I promise I will hold on to you. I don't know what I'd do without you. You can take me high. So I'm going to go ahead and dry up the floor because I'm going to be pulling out my Bissell Zing and I'm going to get um, my baseboards and things like that vacuumed up and I don't want any water to get sucked up into it. So on this task, what I do is I will give the baseboards a very good vacuum. There is no need to get on your hands and knees and clean baseboards that's not dirty. And if you're taking care of your baseboards and you're vacuuming them often, you won't need to get on your hands and knees and clean them. Um, now, I will admit, in bathrooms and in kitchens, you might need to clean the baseboards more often than anywhere else. Bathrooms are humid, and that will cause any dust or lint or anything like that to stick to your baseboards, making it more difficult to clean. Now, on my vacuum, I have a very soft bristle brush. I buy this separately. This is a horsehair brush. It is um, bought separately from the vacuum. Um, because I'm giving these a really good clean and I'm really scrubbing with it, I don't want to use the one that comes with the vacuum because it's hard and I don't want to scrape up, scratch up, or have to repaint my baseboards from doing this. But this right here acts as a very good abrasive to really pull up any of the stuff that is on or stuck to your baseboards. Then, if there's anything that needs to be wiped up, I will go and I will use my, my rag to wipe that up. I don't know if you can see the color change, but right in here, there's a color change between this part of the grout and that part. So there's some sort of stain here that I want to address. And then I also see another one, where was it? Right here, in front of the bathroom, in front of the toilet area. So I'm gonna address those two. Let me show you how I do that. All right, so you want to address those stains quickly so that way it doesn't turn into a permanent stain. And what I use is this Zep, okay? I use this and then I use this grout brush. As you can see, it's kind of angled. Let's see if I can get it to... As you can see, it's angled and it can fit right into the grout lines and this will give it a good scrub. You want to try to get these um, stains quickly because this can be a whack-a-mole situation that's going to have you having to clean all the grout in order for everything to look good. Now, for goodness sake, do as I say and not as I do in this situation and be sure that you're wearing shoes. Not only should I be wearing gloves in this situation, definitely, I should also be wearing shoes. Now, I'm not going to be stepping on any of this stuff and I'm being very cautious, but I need to tell you that this can be very toxic. You want to be sure that you're working in, an, in a ventilated area. You don't want to stand on it and you don't want to touch it. But the stuff really does work. Now, let me show you what that gets up. All that dirt that was in these grout lines. So 
as you've noticed, I've put on my shoes. I got smart, but it was too late. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and put some clear warm water into this bucket. And then I will mop up any of the areas where I used the grout cleaner. I will then um, pour that out and I'll put fresh um, water in here with a little bit of cleaner and I'll go ahead and give these floors a good clean. I do not want to mix products um, with that grout cleaner. That's the reason why I am doing it um, two separate times. If you're not familiar with this mop bucket that I'm using, it's called the Joy Moop. What you do is you put it in one side and that will um, you know, put water onto your pad. And on the other side, depending on how many times you put it through that little slot, it will wring out the mop. So if you don't want a lot of water on your mop, like if you have a wood floor, that's a perfect way to do that. Plus it cleans your mop when you put it into the first, um, the first pass cleans the mop, the second pass um, takes water off of the mop head. So I'm gonna go over these grout lines several times. I wanna be sure to pick up any of that, um, that grout cleaner that we were using, get that all um, picked up and then we can just pour it down the drain. And then I will go ahead and fill it up again and add a little bit of my cleaner into it and we will get these floors nice and squeaky clean. Across the table, echoes in the room. Shadows dance and bear walk. What's with the melodies of you? So another thing that I learned from my father is that when you mop or when you vacuum, you want to work your way out of the room. You don't want to step back into what you have already cleaned. Work your way back your way out of the room. I'm going to have to change that up just a little bit here in the bathroom. I'm going to go ahead and do this bathroom area. And then once it dries, I will come back in and I will do around the toilet. I don't like to use the mop head around the toilet and then drag that into my bathroom. This is where my grandkids come in and they will, you know, play. Some of them are little crawlers or they're sitting on the floor and I don't want any yuckiness on them. So I go ahead and I clean the bathroom and I'm going to allow this to dry. Then I will come back in and I will go around the toilet. Then I can take that mop head off and go put it in a sanitizing wash. So Anyways, you want to back your way out of a room, either when you're vacuuming or you're mopping, the best that you can.
got a lot of motivation and I hope you got a lot of great tips on how to clean your bathroom like a professional. Now, if you like this video, would you please give me a big thumbs up? And if you haven't already subscribed, click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so that way you get reminded every time I post a new video. Until then, stay blessed my friends.